Hello there you beautiful people, and since we're counting down the days of the book of Boba Fett, by the way, if you really are, it's for tomorrow, I don't know what to be more excited for, for the new year or for the book of Boba Fett, why not both of them, because today we're gonna discuss every single Jedi that is definitively alive and possibly alive during the book of Boba Fett. This is much more of a revised kind of video than I made a year ago when The Mandalorian was on, and we talked about every Jedi that was alive during that time. Of course, it was wasn't a shocker that I predicted Luke Skywalker would come to train Grogu, and that's exactly what happened. This time around, though, there doesn't seem to be any need for any Jedi to appear. However, you know my thoughts about Dave Filoni and Jon Favreau. They just can't help themselves at times. They want to throw us the fans a bone now and again. So a cameo by a renowned Jedi would not be a very bad thing. I'm going to start off this list by saying that I want an answer once and for all about Barriss Offee. I might have gone off the rails with the first one on the list, but honestly, I really expected for Dave Filoni to give us an answer about Barriss Offee, even in the Bad Batch series, which did not happen unfortunately. That was exactly the time when we should have gotten an answer, and we didn't. As far as is she alive or not, I've had this conviction and I will stick with it that if we do not see a body or a lightsaber or a confirmation, a verbal confirmation by somebody, then I do not believe that Jedi or person is dead. And since we've not seen anything about Barriss Offee, then why not she is alive and could come back in the book of Boba Fett. I would love to see that or at least a mention of Barriss Offee in some fashion. Next on the list is our favorite Luke. Luke Skywalker is actually right now training Grogu to be a Padawan and possibly one, one day a Jedi Knight, a Jedi Master, why not? I can't wait to see what actually happens with Grogu's training because of course we don't see Grogu in the Star Wars sequels and there should be an explanation about that. It seems that somehow or another the training was just not completed or just Grogu and Luke went their separate ways for some reason. The next Jedi-ish confirmed to be alive is Leia Organa. Now before you go on saying Leia Organa is not a Jedi, well, think again. In The Rise of Skywalker, we see quick flashbacks of a young Luke Skywalker training a young Leia Organa. In those scenes, we get to see a very young Luke Skywalker at that. We know by the Rise of Kylo Ren comics that Luke Skywalker went on to sport a beard of sorts during Ben Solo's childhood. So him not having a beard during those scenes looks very young, similar to how he looked in Return of the Jedi, lets us know that he started training Leia immediately after after Return of the Jedi, after Leia learned about her true identity being Anakin Skywalker's daughter. However, her status as the daughter of Bail Organa and the original daughter of the original politician, Padme Amidala, we know that much of Leia's work went for the New Republic on the political side, where she helped rebuild a new government. Working as a senator, Leia would also be in the midst of raising her son with Han Solo, and that was Ben Solo. So this gives us a tiny window. Leia trained with Luke, became very prominent in the Force as we've seen in the the Last Jedi, and in those flashbacks, she became a very skilled duelist and a force user until she officially retired from Jedi business, from being trained and using her force abilities, and gave way for her son to be trained by her brother, Luke Skywalker. Ben Solo would go on to be a formidable apprentice until we all know what happened afterward. Of course, we know Ahsoka Tano is alive and well at this time. In The Mandalorian Season 2, we saw that she got caught up not only with Din Djarin, but also with Grogu too. During the Book of Boba Fett timeline, Ahsoka Tano is off fighting the remnant of the Empire and, more specifically, possibly Thrawn too. Now we move to the list of doubtful Jedi that are alive, but if there is no confirmation of their death, and if we don't have a body, then we can safely assume that they're still alive. And, and the first one on this doubtful list, of course, is Ezra Bridger, with the return of Ahsoka Tano and her mentioning Admiral Thrawn, who seems to be alive and prospering with the remnants of the Empire in the Outer Rim. Then this gives way for us to assume that Ezra Bridger is alive and well, and hopefully will come back 
in the Mandalorian series. The next one in line is Cal Kestis. Cal Kestis was last seen during the Imperial Era. This is the era between Revenge of the Sith, Order 66, and A New Hope. Cal Kestis went on an adventure after another, becoming a better, formidable Jedi as he went along until he faced Darth Vader. That was his ultimate test in the end. Fortunately for him, he made way with his life, he escaped, and up until now we don't know what happened to him. We have no idea if he is still alive during the Mandalorian era, but again, this is the not confirmed dead list, so we can assume that he is still alive. Not only him, Cal Kestis, but we can also assume about Sarah Junda who befriended Cal Kestis during that time, and she too escaped with her life together with Cal Kestis. One Jedi that nobody really has mentioned still is Nock Med. His journey is very much documented up until Return of the Jedi, so this is five years previous to the Mandalorian era, we know that Nock Med is still alive, and he died approximately 30 years after the Battle of Yavin, resting comfortably knowing that the Jedi had flourished one once more in the New Republic era. He was introduced in the canon novel Force Collector. He was trained in the Jedi Order, but he could only reach the title of Padawan before quitting the Jedi altogether. Just before the Clone Wars started, Nock left the Jedi Order. He continued to develop his connection with the Force, and in the meantime, he also started his own family. When the Empire rose to power and news reached to Nock Med that they were hunting down the Jedi and killing them, he was forced to flee and leave his family. Before he could even escape this galactic conflict, he faced a Grand Inquisitor and managed to destroy his opponent's lightsaber in duel, so he remained hidden for 30 years before he just learned the Empire's defeat at the hands of Luke Skywalker. This means that Nakhmed is still roaming around possibly alive during the Mandalorian era. And of course, Boba Fett's nemesis, Mace Windu. Mace Windu is definitely alive. I don't know for which project they will bring him back. I'm thinking in the Obi-Wan series, but why not bring him back during the Book of Boba Fett 2? Because they have a history. People forget that Windu and Boba have a tumultuous history together. Don't forget that it was a kid Boba Fett who saw firsthand his dad get decapitated by Mace Windu himself. So honestly, if you ask me, I don't think there's a greater possibility of Mace Windu coming back. Sure, he would fit in the Obi-Wan series too, but it would be good if not better if he comes back and meets up face to face with Boba Fett maybe one last time. That is it for our list. So what did you guys think about the list and did I leave somebody off? Speak your truth before Boba Fett starts on the 29th and that's only two days away guys. So be sure to subscribe to this channel. We're going to cover everything. Leave a thumbs up down below if you enjoyed this video. Now you're going to have an awesome day Star Wars fans. I'll see you in the next video and may the force be with you. Until then.